What's up, my brother? It's dark. Frightening in. Oh, they're scary. Don't tell Man, I strike twice like lightning in. Are you dark? Yeah. Listen. Chip. Chip. Policy. Yo. Lou, he's frightening. Oh, they're scary. Don't tell Man, I strike twice like lightning in. That leg kick is frightening. That right hook is frightening. And if I talk with a try test, Lou, I'm inviting him. Up across the night in him. Dick did it, this one's frightening. Who's better? Fuck knows. Don't feel your walk, get a broke nose. Didn't wanna walk with my bro. He's trouble that you don't wanna look for. Man, I get slumped with a good blow. Get banged and end up on look north. Man, I'm gonna take this worldwide. But for now, we's wanna best up north. <laughs> The biggest barbecue chicken pizza you can get. If you want one, you can have one. But it's either like <laughs> flapjack, pasta. You know, like that's a that's an hard question. That's a lovely question. I'm here this week with Louis. Uh, he's an up and coming amateur MMA fighter. He's got a record of 13 to 2 and 0. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself. What what are you doing at the minute? Uh, how's your fighting career going at the minute? Yeah, so I've um, I recently my last fight was at uh, um, the European Championships in Rome. Um, so. When you fight in a European Championships amateur, it's over five days. You fight every day. So, won my first um, fight. Got I've got a buy in the first round. Won my second fight. Lost my third fight to the lad. And then went on to get gold. So I got bronze. Did all right. But uh, you know, wanted the gold. Didn't get it. But I'll be back fighting again soon. So um, next fight November, I'll either be fighting um, at Doncaster Dome. Or I'll be fighting in Bahrain at the World Championships. Well, yeah, get yourself down to Bahrain. That'll be sound like a <laughs> holiday of a lifetime. Uh, so I think the best place to start is at the beginning. So how long have you been fighting for now? So I'm 19 now. And I had my first fight when I was five. So five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. How did you? Uh, how did that start? How did fighting come about? Started off well when I was five. I was getting picked on at school. Right. And, uh, yeah. My dad wasn't having it, so he took me to kickboxing and boxing. Yeah. And I was I were all right at it, so... Just kept <laughs> I, going. Yeah, yeah. I had my first fight when I was five, um, kickboxing. I, t- I had two fights in a day because someone else's opponent didn't turn up. <laughs> so my dad stuck me in again. Against first lad were, were a seven and second were eight. So not bad then. Not bad for Threw me at the deep end of it. Um, and then when I were, um, when I were nine... I started Thai boxing, I had my first Thai fight. And um did that until I was like fourteen. I started doing just bits of MMA. I wasn't really interested in fighting. Then I I really got into it and had my first MMA fight when I was sixteen and I've just been doing that since then. So did you try any other sports or was it fighting from the start? Uh, yeah, I've I've uh, tried every other sport and I'm rubbish at everything <laughs> else. Yeah. Uh any of the any that were close to beating fighting or Nah, no. I'm not I'm not good at anything. I'm only, <laughs> I'm literally only good at fighting. I'm out with a ball. So I'm terrible. Your first fight happened when you were five. What what was that like? Do you remember any of the emotions you felt or I, I how can't it remember. happened? It were it was weird because I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing. Like when you're that young yeah. you sort of don't know. I'd never I'd never seen it before. You just like, follow I, instructions. I just, yeah, yeah, I just been in gym and trained like oh you're gonna have a fight now like, all right and then they stuck me in a ring and i had a fight with someone <laughs> like is, is that like how it just kept going and you've, yeah, you've just yeah. kept fighting and yeah. then here you are now yeah yeah that's it i've just just kept going you know keep at it keep getting better and then you get so somewhere. your first like fight that you, re- you remember how did you prepare for it like if, if you remember the first fight where you thought oh hang on this is an actual fight yeah uh how did you prepare for that like what was the training like so my first I say my first one where I was training really hard was probably when I was about 14, I reckon, when I, were, I went and fought in Thailand. I'd say that that first time I was training mental. Like, I did, I trained hard. I always run every day, you know, it pads on a night, like, we're at school. Sometimes I'd train, like, train on the morning before school. Um, what was that like, like, trying to fit school in as well? Because if, yeah. uh, if you don't know, we went to the same high school and I definitely didn't go training on the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it were hard, but I, you want to win, you do what you need to do to win. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no making excuses because when, when you get in there, you're the only one getting in that ring. You know, no one else can get in and do bits for you. You've got to do everything yourself. So 
when did you uh, figure out that was the sort of like mentality you needed? Like, was there a turning point or? Um, I don't know. It's sort of just been drilled into me from from being a kid. You know, yeah. like just trainers at different gyms. More winners never quit. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit of a family thing as well because all, all my my uncles, are, like everyone on my mum's side, of family's box. So like, it's drilled into you. That's how you you know you train hard and you'll do well. So what was it like? You say your family started boxing. Were they like big promoters of you to do it as well? Yeah, or? yeah. Every, like it's sort of I don't know. Like I, I started on a little. I want, that, like uh, I wasn't I wasn't very good to begin with. Really, you know. Yeah. I just like when I, when I was a younger and that wasn't that good. I just got good because I just kept training and eventually working out. I'm, yeah, you I'm all right now. <laughs> you know. Would but, you say so? Was there anyone in your family who was like you looked up to them to fight like them or? Nah, cause I, to be fair, I've never really seen any of them fight because it was years yeah. ago. Like, um, like there's my uncle Phil. He box. He was like a decent pro boxer. Um, he's about he's near, nearly sixty. I think that's right. I don't want to say he's older than he is. <laughs> he's nearly sixty, I think. Um, nearly fifty, then we'll say. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a decent pro, and then uh, my uncle Martin boxed amateur, and um, my uncle Graham he boxed as well. So it's just like I, I've never like looked up to him in that sort of way, like. As in, like, I've watched them fight and thought, yeah. oh, yeah, I want to be like that. But I'd say, if they were a fighter, I'd say I'd always looked up to from being a kid, it'd be Ramon Deckers, mm. who was um, the first fighter to go into Thailand and get fighter of the year, being being a foreigner. Not being from... Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. So, would you say you, you've tried to, like, copy what he does or, yeah. like, copy his yeah, style? I did, but when, when I was younger, I literally, that's all I did, I just watched Ramon Deckers. He's, he's, he's a, his nickname was the Turbine from Hell. So you imagine him. how he fights, he's just absolutely crazy, throws yeah. non-stop power, everything. That's how I, that's how I wanted to fight, you know. Yeah, you just wanted to be yeah, like a yeah. complete power horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what was the first uh, What was the first sort of moment where you thought, w- would it have been around like when you went to high school, you thought there's something a bit different about here, it's not just a hobby, it's not just, oh, this is something I can do to keep fit, this is something that I want to do. Was there like a defining moment that made that happen? Or? I'm, not, I'm not sure, because a lot of... Like through high school, I sort of thought, well, I'm gonna to have to do something else as well because when I was Thai, like Thai boxing, there ain't, there ain't that much money in it, and like mm. even even to a few years years ago, there wasn't that much money in MMA until recently. You know, like the coming of the McGregor era yeah, and that yeah. where where fighters are getting like ten million pounds a fight now. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I I, I say pro- probably when I was about fifteen, sixteen, like when, probably after I had my first MMA fight, you know, and I saw. The massive reaction I got from it with that that spinning back kick knockout, yeah. and it went viral, and I was like, I could probably make some money out of this, you know, I, I could do this as a career. What so. what was that like for? Because well, for me personally, I've never been in a sort of fight where it's been in a ring and people have watched it. So like, if you could talk me through some like, so when you start, would, would you do training camp for like two months, three months? Yeah, like yeah, two months. Like eight weeks normally is like eight when weeks. the training gets upped. So what would be the process for the first like month? So usually first month is more like they'll go first half is more strength training, getting strong, you know, because we don't need to cut his weight down or cut yeah. his food down for the first four weeks really. Um, more sparring, you know, heavier sparring. Uh, the first I say the first four about well, four weeks are about getting strong and fit more than anything. Um, What's the diet like during that? I imagine I imagine yeah. so because yeah. It's not nice. Like for, for first four weeks, not bad. You're just eating healthy more than anything, rather than yeah. having to count calories as much. Then the the last four weeks, when I'm getting the weight off, because um, like I walk around at seventy two kilos, and I fight at sixty one kilos. That's so it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of weight to lose when yeah. I'm not. I don't have much weight on me anyway. Yeah, you know, so definitely. like um, last four weeks, my calories get cut right down, and I'm still doing the same amount of training. Yeah, and say I'd say the the last three weeks you you feel dead, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you don't feel good. What's the so if if you're gonna talk as like a day for your meals, what would your breakfast? What would your meals so be? So when when I'm cutting, say I'll have my breakfast. I'll have like a small bowl of porridge, right? And then I'll go to the gym, train for like an hour and a half, two hours on the morning. Uh, come home, have have my dinner, which will be like um, some protein, sort of chicken or beef or something with. Maybe a little bit of rice and greens, and then same for me tea. Mm. Yeah, I uh, yeah I've I've started a bit of a diet and it's it's tough like yeah yeah it's keeping to it as well as the main thing. But when yeah. you've got that main goal in mind, yeah. uh, so your first title fight when was that? Could you talk us through that? My uh, first title fight in MMA was 
Were it last year or at end of 2016? I think when when I won the yeah, what end of twenty or end of, not end of 2017? Um, that was my first MMA title fight. I thought I it were a tournament, so I had two fights in one night. Um, won my first one, first round, ground and pound, knocked him out, and then second fight, uh, round two, won rear naked choke to win the the title, and then um, yeah, and I defended that recently on yeah on Cage Steel against um, Rhys McEwen, like yeah. Scottish number one, and uh, beat him. I watched that. That was a good yeah, fight. Yeah, it was. yeah, good fight. Good good opponent. So. Okay. From the highs of winning, what was it? Do you remember your first loss? Like, yeah, what yeah. was that like? My first loss that I can remember, like, even if it's like from Thai boxing, yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. Um, well, my second tie, I won my first tie fight, I lost my second one. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, it's the f- the first time I'd, I lost that, it, it were it were weird because my first fight I won, and it's like, oh, great, you know, he's won his first fight, he's gonna be good. And I got in the ring, I, I were I were 10, nine or 10. I just didn't do anything, you know, like I got had a sort of like a rabbit in headlights and I didn't really do all with fight and then lost and I'm like, oh, better not do that again. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, it's, it's gutting, but I th- you learn a lot more, you learn 10 times more from a loss than you do yeah, from a win, definitely. you know. Like, um, then I fought, I fought that same kid again about two years later and, and beat him. So... It all came full yeah, circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but who, like, was, um, who was like the first person that came up to you and like, Comforted you after that loss? Do you remember or probably my mum? Yeah. Was she a big factor in like your fighting? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know my mum because my mum's taught me a lot about nutrition more more mm. than anything and having a strong mind. You know, she's always grown up med sure I've sort of believed in myself and I'm not a quitter. You know, like it's yeah. been bred into me. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Mums are great. Yeah. Yeah. Mums are good. Yeah. <laughs> So what so if because uh, I've never had a fight well I've never had an actual fight I've been beaten up before but that, that doesn't count. <laughs> uh, so what's a title fight like compared to a normal fight? It, could is there any difference or do you go to into all of them the same? Uh, I go into it the same. I'm always there uh, to do the same thing to try knock someone's head off, you know. Yeah. But it's it makes it, some people find it more nerve wracking, you know the um, the pressure. They'll, they'll think oh you know it's a title it's more important. Yeah. But For me it's. I prefer it. Like I, I perform well under pressure. Mm. I like it's like the extreme, isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah, yeah. You're putting a spotlight, yeah. and it's like, what can I do in this yeah. situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I enjoy it. Like I prefer. I like fighting in my hometown in front of everyone I know. I think it makes it better. Like you, my the Doncaster show, Cage Steel is probably mm. what I'd say is my home show. Mm. So when I fight there, I'll take you know, like 150 people with me. I in like I'll, the image you're seeing, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I'm I'm walking out and everyone's chanting my name, you know, and if I get in a a bad spot in a fight and think, you know, am I going to be able to get out of this? Yeah. And you look and you see all your mates chanting your name going mental. You think, nah, I'm getting out of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it spurs you on. Is it, so? Would you say your fans are a big motivator for you? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Like people who come support me and watch me fight, make, make it. You know, that's yeah. that's who I'm doing it for. What would you say your biggest motivator in fighting is at the minute would it be like the titles or is it the journey you're going to go on or what uh, sort of thing motivates you to get through every day to get to the end goal well obviously i want to win but uh, uh, like the the end goal is the ufc i want to i want to be in yeah. the ufc you know so I'm, I'm t- i'll probably turn pro i'm turning pro either end of this year or in the new year mm. um so then it, it all starts again from there you know um but yeah the the end goal is i, w- I want to be in ufc yeah, you went to Spain like the same way you are now as well. Yeah, I'll, to be fair, at some point I'll probably move up because I do. I struggle to make bandit weight now, and I'll I'll fill out in the next few years. Yeah, a bit. So I'll probably I'll probably move up to featherweight eventually. Mm. But at the minute, yeah, bantam weight. Is there anyone? Uh, is there anyone in the UFC now who in, who inspired you? Who you see at your weight category? You think I, I can beat them? Yeah, these oh, are, maybe not beat them, but yeah. I want to be on their level. Yeah, on their level. Like there's there's quite a few in, like the the top guys at bantam weight, but. Um, I t- the guys, my favorite fighter is probably Max Holloway, mm, um, yeah. the featherweight champion at UFC. Um, I don't want to get into a ring with him. Nah, definitely yeah, not. yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's a he's one of my, definitely one of my favorite fighters to watch. Um, but yeah, same Max Holloway, yeah, because he's someone who's come back a few fr- times from getting beat, and now yeah. he's like he's on like a ten fight win streak now or something. Yeah. 
Well, uh, when I was looking through your data, you went on a 10 fight win streak. What was that like? Like, did, did you see it at the time or is it just like, I'm fighting? Yeah, yeah, it's just, that's it. Like, it is, it is good being on a win streak, but the, you think, I think the problem is when, like, when I'd never lost in MMA, um, it's like, I don't know, it's like, I'm f you end up... You're on top of I, the world, I, you think? Yeah, I, as well, I think, though, when I did lose the first time, it was sort of a relief as well, because I... I won't, felt like I was fighting to win or fighting not to lose my record. Yeah. You know, rather than fighting to go out and enjoy what I'm doing. But yeah, it has a lot more pressure yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Once, once I'd like got that first loss, it was sort of like, right, I can fight how I want to fight now. It don't, it don't matter anymore, yeah, yeah. you know. But I think I think that's the more, most important thing. You've got to, like, there's a lot of people who train, you'll have a couple of fights and they, they don't really like fighting. They just like winning. Yeah. You know, and having the oh, I'm a, I'm a fighter, or whatever. But yeah, yeah, you've got you've got to love fighting before before you love well, winning. Especially in MMA, because there's yeah. so many ways to lose. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be a complete fighter. Whereas yeah. in boxing, you can you can have a good punch. Like Deontay Wilder is a very good boxer, but he's yeah. got a very good yeah, punch, yeah, and that, yeah. that wins him a lot of fights. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a mad thing about MMA as well. It's not always the best fighter that wins. You know, you, no, you see that in UFC fight, all the yeah. time. It's it's because, like you said, there's so many variables. Anyone, anyone can win, beat anyone on any yeah. given day. You know, it's not always the, the like boxing. Most of the time, the the best fighter wins because mm. he's got the he's the best boxer. Yeah. But there's been loads of upsets. Like every every couple of weeks, you know, there's a, yeah. there's a title fight. Someone wins. You think how's he beat him? But yeah. it's there's so like you said, there's so many factors. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. But that's what makes it an exciting sport. With that motivate you in a sense because would that motivate you, motivate you or scare you because that's that means anything can happen yeah. to you yeah anything can happen but that's that's what I love about it you know yeah it's it's, it's that's what makes a sport great mm. so what has been what would you say the most difficult part of your career has been so far uh I don't know probably probably that last loss you know at the tournament yeah yeah because like I got knocked out and uh, never been knocked out before. And when you, I didn't think well, before you've never been knocked out. I've never been dropped before. Yeah. Like you don't. You think ah, I just can't be knocked yeah. out. You if know, you haven't seen chin. the kick that knocked him out, yeah. I, I didn't knock anybody out. He's a disgusting <laughs> yeah. kick. Yeah. Absolutely no head left. You know, and I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a it's a weird like, especially because you don't feel it and you don't. It's happening. You just wake up and you're like, oh, what's happened? Like you yeah. got knocked out. And you're like. Are you joking? You know, <laughs> what? What? I, have I thought yet? You know, what? You've weird. Do you um, think that's that's quite it's a quite good thing to learn that though because now you know what you're doing to other people and you know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's all it's just all part of the journey. You know, yeah. I've got to, you just take whatever happens. It's all it's like it's just a journey. But um, so how well. long would you say it took you from the knockout to like get yourself back on your feet and be like, oh, that's gone now. I need to work. So, well, as soon as I, I went back in change rooms, I was, I was still falling about. Like, I want to fight him again now, <laughs> you know. But um, and I knew what I'd, I'd done wrong, you know. And um, for that, I hadn't had a good fight camp really, so I'm not making excuses, you know. He, he were a good fighter, very good fighter. Um, but I only had, like a four week camp because I, I had an injury leading up to it. Um, you know, I normally I do all my striking with Liam Harrison, mm. and Liam were fighting the same weekend, so for the last four weeks where or were training he were in Thailand training for his fights yeah. you know a lot of things like but that's what I'm just about learning what I need in my camp you know I know I need Liam in my camp I need to make sure I'm training with the right people and I'm, yeah. I'm going in so have you best. pretty much is, is Liam like set you like him as your corner person now like, do you know exactly what you want when you have someone in your corner yeah 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 so like the two people I, I normally have in my corner um, definitely is Liam and Danny Mitchell my mm my MMA coach so I know them to them two know me better than anyone you know they yeah. know what I need telling them that I need to do and they want to talk to me to make me do what I, I have to do have they helped you so when when you said you you basically got what got back off it straight when you were like I want to knock him out again or I want to try and knock him out this time do you think they've helped you do that just give you like a no loss mentality yeah yeah definitely like being around like because Liam's 10 time world champion you know yeah, be, yeah, being around people like that it, it rubs off on you yeah it's like uh, the saying about being around great people makes you a great person. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what's ke what's keeping you going now is like you've just come off of a loss. What is your next step? Like, is it is it is it this fight in November or is it is it the main goal that you're after? What is what is your next step in like the next few 
months to get you ready for this November fight? Is it just another camp or? Yeah, it's just like, I'm just getting back into main, uh, training at a minute. Like, I haven't been able to do loads because um, when because of that, I had a 60 day suspension. So I can't really do right. any sort of super intense training. Is that tough since you've never experienced that before? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's annoying, like, because we have like Friday night sparring. Yeah. So all my anger that gets built up throughout the week. Yeah. Gets released on a Friday night, you no, know. You we, have, we, have, we have a big like whack down. Fridays. So now I've got I've got six weeks of anger built up in me. And someone's gonna get knocked <laughs> and, out the minute you let that yeah, out. I haven't whacked anyone in the face this six <laughs> week. And it uh yeah. I'm quite angry. We'll make sure it's but, not yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the is you reckon that's the toughest part of your camp so far then? Is this knockout and being able to all this like sixty day suspension, do you reckon this is like the hardest bit, or is, is there anything in your camp which is a lot harder than that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't see, if, I don't look at things and think, oh, this is, this is really hard. It's just what I've got to do, you know. That's yeah. what I've got to do to get where I want to be. It doesn't matter how hard it is. Do you reckon that's just been drilled into you from a young age, or has that come from anyone? Or? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah, it's just, it's just like the, a winner's mentality. Like, mm. you've got to have. I think if you think, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, if you don't want to do that, then go do something else. You yeah. know. If you, if you want to whine say I don't want to do that to achieve whatever you want to achieve it's like in anything yeah. in anything when you want to do if you don't want to put the work in and graft then you're not going to get where you want to be mm. is there so we talked talk about you fighting uh, is there anyone outside of like fighting who inspires you like some like maybe a celebrity or someone who you look up to you know what <laughs> no, I don't, all I really do is watch fighting I, yeah. I live, live and breathe fighting you know there's there's not many people, I'd say, outside of boxing and MMA and Thai and stuff that uh, I look up to, really. You know? It's just a driven mentality. Yeah, fight yeah, is where you yeah. want to be, so that's yeah. where you look. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's anyone that's an hard worker. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Is there anyone, so, it, it, maybe not a celebrity, it, it's someone in your personal life who in, inspires you, maybe not because they've done something like great, but maybe because they're doing something. Yeah. Um, my little cousin, Lyle, he's got um, cerebral palsy. Right. So he's like partially blind mm. um you know he's, he's in a he's in a wheelchair um and he's the happiest kid i've ever met yeah you know like he's like people say oh you know he's got this terrible um disease or whatever but it doesn't affect him he's always no. laughing he's always yeah. smiling he's, he's the happiest kid i know do you always so you when you got knocked out you said you always look for the positives uh do you do you look at the negatives as well like do you make do you like look do you look at the negatives or do you just think oh i did really well at this no, I got. I look. I think right. I've done that wrong. That's what I need to change. Mm. You know, like, like I said, that's why you you learn a lot more from a loss than you do a win because you've seen what where your weaknesses are. Yeah. You know, you think right. I'll change the changes next time. Now I'm stronger than I was before. You know, I'm harder to beat because yeah. I've gone and made the changes. So do you take? Would you say you take some of the lessons you've learned in fighting to other aspects of your life? So, what have you learned from fighting which you can use in everyday life? Maybe if that's mentally or yeah, don't don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, definitely. Like, and uh, there's always someone. There's always someone better than you. There's yeah, always someone yeah. bigger and better. Someone's that's, always going to yeah, yeah, up yeah. Yeah. We've got some uh, questions from people. So <laughs> I'll have to look through them, make sure they're not dodgy. Uh, so first one, what is your favorite cheat meal? Favorite cheat meal: pizza, barbecue pizza. chicken pizza. How big? the biggest barbecue chicken pizza you can get. Deep pan? Nah, I'm a thin base, thin base. Yeah. Uh, someone's asked, what score could you get by kicking one of those arcade scoring machines? I think they mean, you know the yeah, punch, the punch ball machines. What's the hard, what do you reckon your score is? Or what score have you had? I don't know, I'll have to try that. I've kicked him one. I've never and there's one right there. Yeah, I wish I were. Nah, I've done, on holiday last year, I think, I spent about 100 quid in them. That's all we were doing, just going around, seeing who could hit them. Got to so, it, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> apart from Thai boxing, is there anything else in your background of MMA or is uh, it just mainly Thai boxing? Mainly Thai that I've started with, but I, I spend more time wrestling than and grappling wrestling. now than all, you know. Well, yeah, I saw six of your wins have been by submission. Is, yeah, that, yeah. is that what you've been learning? Yeah, that's like, obviously, I've spent the most part of my life doing Thai and then I've been doing MMA, so it's like I wanted to get my grappling yeah. up to the same level as my striking. Yeah. So, yeah. Someone's yeah. asked, how often do you train weekly? Like, uh, When I'm training for a fight, I'll either, depending on what I'm doing, it's either twice or three times a day. 
So I don't even need that many centers. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't ask that one. What made you change from MMA to Muay Thai? I sort of, um, I got bored of Thai boxing because it sort of you you fight Thai style. You you know you it's just the scoring of Thai. It's um sort of like kick score higher than punches. Yeah. You know you fight their style. You you heavy feet. I don't. I didn't feel like I could express myself like MMA. Mm. Do what you want. You know. If you want to punch him, we punch him. If you want to kick him, kick him. Just as long as you're doing something, yeah. you're causing damage. Like I feel like I could express myself some more with it. So, Rob, Robbie A B D says rematch. <laughs> Robbie A B D. I'll show you him. Yeah, him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Nah. Rematch. If he wants one, he can have one. But <laughs> I don't think he really wants a rematch. Uh, someone's <laughs> asked how do you prepare your body for fights so I imagine that means like if you're going to get bruised what do you do after you get bruised what like to recover yeah like what's your recovery like uh, recovery so rest eat well eat, eating well is a lot of it you know um, I take CBD does help a lot mm. um, sponsored by Love Emp so uh, check them out um, is that just like to help with like joints and like muscles yeah yeah it just help, helps me relax and Good, like food and sleep are the main things you know yeah. the most most underrated things I uh, sometimes use cryotherapy chambers mm. you know like them full body things they look ice really baths that, that sort of yeah. thing massages uh, I'm sponsored by um, Lucy Harrison massage as well get all the sponsors uh, in yeah yeah just get all the sponsors in yeah so if you need a massage in Morley get it into Lucy yeah <laughs> how do you avoid injuries like the same sort of process uh, yeah and not over training so if I am Really tired. Um, I I miss a set. You know, I miss a session. Yeah. You got to listen to your body. It's like training hard and just training stupid as well. Yeah. You got to train smart. So, if there's a day where I'm I'm feeling like I'm run down, you know, and I do need a rest, I'll I'll, I'll take a day off. Yeah. Uh, what is the last meal you eat before a fight? Um, what was the last one? Last time, the last thing I ate was cocoa pops. So it's all right for some. <laughs> yeah, ba- basically. Maybe not eat it again after the last result. <laughs> um, the it's like the last sort of meal is just fast carbs. So like mm. it don't it don't really matter about the micronutrients of what you eat. It's just the macro. So it's just good sugars. You know, you're yeah, just getting yeah. sugar in, so you've got energy when you're fighting, really. But um, yeah, so it's either like flapjack, pasta. You know, like yeah, chocolate fat, sort of thing. Carbs. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, Big carbs. So the last question we've got from someone is: uh, Is Mo Zube your favourite training partner from Birmingham? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> you are his favourite training partner. Uh, and the last question from me: How would you like to be remembered? Um. Oh, that's a that's an hard question. That. It's a lovely question to end on. Um. As a, uh, one of the best MMA fighters to come out of the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll hold you to that, and yeah, we'll yeah. hopefully do another interview at some point when you are the best. Favorite. Thank you very much yeah, for coming on, Louis. Uh, check out at Louis Lightning on Instagram. Uh, all the sponsors he said, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.